Today, I'm going to touch on a controversial subject, but first a story. If you walk into the office of a friend of mine, he has project folders covering his desk, but that's not all. His windowsills have piles of paper on them. His archives are in stacks on his floor. Now, ironically, the guy has file cabinets, although I have no idea if they're full or empty, or maybe that's where he keeps his lunch. If you never have walked into his office, his filing system would really surprise you because he's a consummate professional, loved by his clients, and he's very successful. I'm Dave Edwards. Does it matter if you have a messy desk? That's our subject for today. I told you it was going to be controversial. If you like these kinds of videos, do me a favor, hit the like button below and consider subscribing. I'd really like to have you on board. And by the way, I do publish a weekly newsletter on leadership management and productivity tips. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is go to my webpage, hit the contact page and uh, fill out the information and I'll, and I'll sign you up. So it's absolutely free. Uh, take a chance, daveedwardsmedia.com. Uh, click on contact and all the information is there. Okay, what does your desk look like? All right, this is my desk. This is not a studio. This is my desk. So we should get that out of the way right now. <laughs> Peter Walsh, who's the author of It's All Too Much, An Easy Plan for Living, A Richer Life with Less, says he likes to think of a desk kind of like a car. Everything you need most immediately, the steering wheel, the radio, the ignition, the indicators, the door handle, is all at arm's length. Things that are needed but are not used regularly are at two arm's lengths away. And, uh, you know, some other stuff could be stashed in the glove compartment and things used less than frequently are in the trunk of your car. He says that your desk is a workstation, not a storage facility. On his desk, you'll find his computer, a keyboard, a charging station for his phone, and vertical files that hold active projects. Uh, Fast Company got a glimpse of Getting Things Done author David Allen's desk. It wrote, a tour of his desk includes a box of facial tissue, a container that holds a letter opener, an X-Acto knife, fountain pen, three felt pens, a ballpoint pen, scissors, and a standing file rack he personally designed that holds about 20 labeled file folders with current projects and client work. Now, of course, Alan also has a, a computer on his, on his desk and, and some other things as well. And my friend with the messy desk would probably be very uncomfortable if he was forced to work in either Alan's or Walsh's office, or for that matter, mine. But whether you like it or not, people judge you by the way you keep your workspace. That according to a study from the University of Michigan at Flint. Researcher Terrence Hogan notes, when there are cues related to less cleanliness, order, organization, and more clutter in an owner's primary territory, perceivers ascribe lower conscientiousness to the owner, whether that owner is a worker in the real world, such as an office, a job seeker in an apartment, a student in a bedroom, or a researcher at a university in a lab office. In another study, nearly three out of four bosses said a messy office is a sign of a disorganized worker, and one in 10 admit that the piles of clutter would be a reason not to promote a staff member. Yet, there might be an upside if you feel better in a cluttered environment. Kathleen Vo is a University of Minnesota psychology scientist, said that her research shows that some people view a messy desk or an office as a sign of creativity. Disorderly environments seem to inspire breaking free of tradition, which can produce fresh insights. She says orderly environments, in contrast, encourage convention and playing it safe. Now, personally, I, I would be very nervous working in a cluttered office. And Prior to meeting my friend with the messy desk and the messy office, I probably would have agreed that that's not the best way of working. But, you know, it works for him. He's, he's a very, very productive professional. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what your desk like, it looks like. If I was your boss and your desk was messy, as long as you got your work done on time 
and it was done well. I don't care what your desk looks like, but not everyone is like me. Some people will make judgments about your desk. And by the way, I do know someone who at the end of the day just takes everything off of his desk, dumps it into the file next to them, closes it, their desk looks neat, and the next morning he brings out all the stuff again. Well, feel free to cite any of this research the next time your boss or colleagues complain about your messy desk. As for me, uh, there's a few things out of order. I have to go clean them right now. Oh, but wait, you know, maybe you work next to someone who not only has a messy desk, but just, I don't know, their behavior, their attitude just drives you crazy. How do you deal with difficult employees is the subject of a course that I prepared because I've learned over time that dealing with uh, employees who are passive aggressive, who just have bad attitudes, it just kind of ruins everyone else's uh, work environment. That's true if you're the boss or even if you were a colleague. So I researched the subject and I pulled together this course on how to manage difficult employees. But really this is great advice for even those of us who work with people who drive us a little bit crazy. I'd like you to check out the course it's at Dave Edwards Media. Just click on the courses, How to Manage Difficult People. I think you'll enjoy it. DaveEdwardsMedia.com. Click on courses. I am the aforementioned Dave Edwards, and thanks for joining me today.